Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at the market site in Times Square, New York City, we have Fausto Puglisi, the founder and president of Cyber Trading University. We're going to take a look at how traders are using Total View. And Fausto, it could not be a better time to have you in with us at Marketplace because with everything going on, the volatility we've seen in the market since you were with us in the middle of February last time. That was pretty crazy. Traders are asking themselves, what's the bottom, what's the top? But as a day trader, you can kind of get an inside look when you're looking at a single stock. Yeah, what, it, what it is, Jill, is that, thanks for having me again. And yes, when it, when it comes to day trading, people realize that what happens over the course of the day, which trickles down to a swing trade into a long-term investment. And my phone's been blowing up. People could ask me, Faust, is this the bottom? Is this the bottom? Because I'm looking, we're looking at the market all day. And honestly, this is how you really know when it's the bottom. When you have the worst of the worst of the worst news and just constantly all negative stuff, and the market's not going any lower, that's when you know it's time to buy. <laughs> so as you see, like a lot of bad news keeps coming up, and then obviously you saw what happened yesterday when they lowered the Fed rate by a half. It, it, it took for a, a big decline, and all of a sudden the market's up with about almost like 900 points so far. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and there's still a lot of bad news that's coming out with the coronavirus and everything else, but that's really when you know when you hit the bottom. So for some of the listeners out there that really were missed a boat when the market had a big rally, you almost hit 30,000. You know, these are the opportunities. You know, honestly, this is like the same thing I saw back in 2008 when we had the financial crisis. So once you start seeing all the bad news, things start backing up, well, start going up. All right, let's take a look at our example here today. We're gonna look at ticker symbol MRNA, NASDAQ listed, of course. What are we looking at? Where's the levels that you're looking to sell? Okay, so listen, what is the MRNA? You know, I keep bringing up stocks. And people are like, what is this company? It doesn't matter. We're just here to make money. The main goal about Total View and is you have to understand how it works, how to know where the buyers and sellers are. It's all about supply and demand. That's why it's such a great tool. So we're looking at a chart right here, and we're looking at the stock right here. And the first thing people notice is, like, the stock's going up beautifully. Nice. Look at this stock. Started this morning. It's at 20, uh, 2580. It's at 28. Is it going higher? Now, the goal is... Why does the stock keep breaking out? It hits a resistance, it comes back down. It breaks the previous resistance, keeps going up. How do you know it's going to keep breaking higher highs? And that, what we're going to do this time is we're going to bring a video so you all can see exactly what it's like to see in the real market conditions. All right, so let's move along to our next slide here. That's exactly what we're doing. Let's take a look at Total View. I'm going to let you take the reins. Tell us what's happening here. Okay, so we got like a little minute video here. So we're looking at some real time. And the key here is time and sales. These are the transactions that are taking place. We're looking at level two. Level two is basically people get for free, but it doesn't give you the depth of data as Total View does. Now, the key here is that you see you don't see that many sellers out there. You're just seeing the best bid and best, uh, best offer of that exchange. But you'll notice how the stock keeps going higher. What we need to focus on is the where you see the big sellers. And you're looking for big orders. You got a 50, 51 different orders out there right around 20, 28. Things are going so quickly, I try to slow it down. So right around so 28, 50. 2850. So that is really your resistance level. So when you're looking at a stock going out, the, uh, going higher, you're going to say, is the stock going to break out? So you see it's coming up to this guy right here really quickly. You see it's coming up. Mm -hmm. It's coming up to this person right here. So 70,000 shares, 5,000 shares. Uh, so it's going to come up to that seller. Now the goal is this. Is that guy going to get executed? Remember, you have 100 share sellers, 300 shares, 1,000. You have a big, uh, a big order out there. You want to see if that guy gets executed, and you want to see if th that's how it breaks out. Remember, what makes support and resistance levels is buyers and sellers. So you got a seller out there. So we're coming up to that seller right here. Now the goal is, is to look right here and see if that seller gets executed. And you see it's coming up to the seller, and boom, the guy gets taken out. It's, it's, ac it's actually executing him. Boom, 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 boom. Look at that. See all those trades actions? Mm -hmm. It took the guy out. Now look how fast the stock goes up. From 250, we're at 260, 270, 280, boom, like that, as quickly as that. That's why it's so important to know where the orders are, know where the resistance, and see if the guy gets taken out. Now, when we get to the next slide, look at it, we're already at, we're already at 2880. Yep, and you can stock, see, you can see you start to see these 35,000 which orders. is yep. exactly now this is the next order now the next question is here's the next biggest resistance there's a 33,000 shares for a th uh, there's there's a uh, hundred different orders out there now then that's where the next resistance level is so the goal is you hit a resistance where's the next resistance the next resistance is the next biggest seller so now we're coming up to him and we're gonna see what's gonna happen when he gets to 29 yeah I mean, it happens so fast well also this is about a, a five minute video that I mm -hmm. was able to capture when we traded this stock and I kind of speed it up over about a minute so it doesn't move as quickly boom we hit 29 yep. the guy got taken out again and look at the stock just took off again and and the thing I want to explain to you Jill is that and your listeners have to understand is that when you have a big seller out there and that guy gets taken out that is a very big demand. Someone says, oh, wow, I'll, I'll take that 30,000 shares. Mm -hmm. And that's why you get the stock that really, really starts to take off. 
Now, the next thing is that you're going to get some resistance levels. People, it's going to start backing off. There's always profit taking going on, right? Of course. So when you have profit taking going on, you could see profit taking going on. But the question is, is it really a profit taking or is it just people just, uh, uh, or is it really going to go lower? In this case, it's not. Seller got done. Remember, we just watched the stock go from 28 to 29. Now look at it. We're at 29.50 already. Stock just keeps going higher and higher because those sellers are getting executed. As those sellers get executed, there's, that means there's a demand for it. When you see big block orders out there, it makes a bigger demand, and that makes it higher. Now, the next resistance level, obviously, is going to be where we, we have to focus on where the next biggest orders are. So we got some, no, I think we freeze, right? We're done? Nope, Almost. we have a little bit more to go here. We slow down over here. Yep, we're done. Oh. So the next video we're going to show. Yeah, we actually go to our slide here. So this is where you're looking at those levels. Right. So we look at the seller. So we have a 67,000 share seller at 28. So now we have to look what's, what, what's what we call iceberg orders. What does that mean? Okay. So it's a funny story. So I came up with this word about 20 years ago after watching the movie The Titanic. <laughs> okay. Have you ever watched that movie? Very sad movie. I, I definitely am recommend it. So anyway, what happened to Titanic? It hit an iceberg. And the, the thing is, everybody was focused on the pretty of the ship and above the water. They didn't realize it's not what's above the water. It's at the bottom of the water. Icebergs are really big. So what happened, it, it crashed and it sunk. So what we're looking for is big iceberg orders, which we call, some people call them big block orders. But when, when you see a big, big order, it's called an iceberg order. So now we're looking at a 2890. And we're looking for a resistance. Once again, stock's going higher. We need to focus on the next resistance level. All right, and which is on the next chart here. If we take a look, yep. So here's a quick, just a quick little screenshot. So as we're looking at it, at, at a, a, you see, it's a lot easier when you're focusing on, when you're just looking at the, at the level, uh, the total view. And it's, it's easy to point it out. Now, please keep in mind, your listeners have to understand, we're fast forwarding this pretty quickly mm -hmm. to get to the point. It doesn't move this quickly. Um, but I'm showing right here is just a quick screenshot. What we're focusing on is this big order right here for 73,000 shares, and there's 30, uh, there's 315 different orders out there making up that 73,000. Now, um, the thing I, I just want to point out is I just want to teach everyone a quick little lesson. Yeah. Don't ever sell anything at $30. dollars. Go out of 29.99. You just cut the line by. <laughs> So that's for anything that's like an evil, even number. Biggest trip, biggest, uh, biggest uh, uh, trick I was taught by my mentors when I was younger. Just, listen, everybody's gonna think thirty. Everybody's gonna think twenty. Go out twenty-one ninety-nine. You just cut the line by seventy-three thousand shares. That's a very it's good. Like selling a house or buying a house. It's like that. Those incremental psychological levels. Well, if you remember, if you look at it, the stock has a penny intervals. Mm -hmm. Every and so that's a little tip. But the thing is, let's focus what happens to the thirty. No. Just right off the bat, you know that's a major resistance level, and that's what we have to focus on. That's, for this the stock to go any higher, it's got to get through that 73,000 share seller on total view. All right, well, let's take a look at that next slide. We're, see what happens next. Now we're going to get the, the other piece of the trade. Okay, so here we're, now we're looking at the stock moving. Here's 29.45, 20, 20, uh, 29.48, 62, 67. So the sellers are getting executed. You can see the transactions taking place, but we know that there's that guy sitting right here. And now his order's coming up. Look, he's starting making up the ranking. Mm -hmm. It's getting up to 30. It's getting close to him. So let's watch what happens. 74, 70. Look at the transactions taking place. It's trying to get there. And, and by the way, those orders, they're all real. People think like they're fake. Those are real orders. Can a guy cancel it? Of course they can cancel it. But that you have to take very seriously, and that's a real order out there. So now when, as we're looking at it, and as it's trading, it's trying to get there. Actually, it kind of almost tested it. You see that right there? Yep. See that candle right there? It's hit it, and now it's starting to back off a little. Now you're starting to see the red candlesticks. So now it means that the, that the last sale is, is lower than the previous. And, and this works for all kinds of stocks. ETFs, would, would it work for ETFs, ETFs also? ETFs, futures, options. It works the same way. Remember, it's the movement of stock that makes all those other things. Yeah, right. ETFs and everything else. You, you, can, you, you can look up any ETF, and it'll come up on total view. Um, look, look, now we're down to 29. Yep. So my point that I'm getting to is this. If you didn't have a game plan, Jill, and didn't know that that seller was out there, and you try to like. And actually, like, if we go to the next slide, this is exactly what you were talking about. There's yeah. your level right there. If you didn't have a game plan and knew that seller was out there, and look at, look at that candle. That stock literally moved. Look how fast it moved in that one bar chart. If you didn't have a game plan to get out there before that guy was out there, and if you didn't what we call shaving, if you didn't shave just before that 30 and cut that line, Guess what? You would, you would just look how much money you would have lost. That stock didn't even drop from 30. Look where it went to. 2730. Wow. You would have got crushed on that trade. Because what happens, if that seller's out there and he's not getting executed, he really had to sell that order, Jill. How is he going to get out? He's got to sell to the buyers. 
If he hits the bid, he's running that stock down, not you and I. Remember, we're not trading 74,000, someone else is, but, and it's not one person. We saw it, it was like there was several people out there doing it. And that's how you gotta focus on using the total view when you trade in today's uh, volatile markets. All right, so cool to actually watch it happen in real time. Thanks so much for doing that for us, Fausto. And thank you for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malentrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.